What's up guys, Jessen here, and welcome to the first episode in this new-ish series that I like to call the Custom Track Wiki Showcase. This is a series of videos I'll be doing every month of the year where I go through anything Custom Track related that happened within the time frame and pick some courses that I find interesting to discuss and promote. I say this is a new-ish series since this is the first time I'm doing it, but I am stealing this idea directly from Carp, the former CTGP Track Council admin. Last year he did these really nice monthly showcases which I recommend you watch if you're interested in what was going on in the Mario Kart Wii modding scene a year ago. He only covered the first two months and I believe he's quit the game at this point, so I thought I would pick things up where he left off. While I wanted to keep these videos brief, I did choose quite a number of tracks for this beginning episode, so without further ado, let's begin with what was uploaded to the wiki in January of 2022. Coming in as the only track released on the very first day of the year, surprisingly, we have a rendition of SNES Nona Plains 1, created by Wacker. While it might sound a little lame that our first track is a take of SNES course since they're notorious for rather boring designs, the way that Wacker chose to handle this was what really intrigued me. Most of the remakes of the track either go for a Mario Kart Wii retro feel or a modernization of the original concept such as Zebiel and Luca, who both did really good jobs on their respective takes. This instead goes for a course that is as close to the original SNES track as possible. That means that this has almost the same exact textures, the 8-bit pipes that permanently face you, and working item boxes that function the exact same as Super Mario Kart where you ride over them like panels to receive your item. I was curious to learn more about Wacker and why he wanted to create this track the way that he did. As it turns out, this is for a SNES pack distribution he's making to try and transform Mario Kart Wii into Super Mario Kart as best as he reasonably can. He made a version of SNES Mario Circuit 1 in the same manner as this one that I happened to miss. I was somewhat familiar with Wacker's work in the past other than this SNES pack, mainly because he released a Wii Play Charge Track and a Wii Play Billiards Battle Stage, which I thought were really good. It's clear from this and his other works that Wacker is more interested in bringing familiar familiar experiences to the custom track scene as opposed to designing any completely new ideas, which is perfectly fine and is evidently working well for him judging from how quality this track is. The flat textures and slippery road take a bit of getting used to at first, but this perfectly executes what it's going for, a track that does the best that it can to bring the Super Mario Kart experience to the Wii. Again, I absolutely love the custom item boxes and other objects sprinkled in to add more character to the track. I love out of the box thinking when it comes to designing custom tracks and manipulating files to get them to function however you want them to. I can definitely see this being a fun addition to any distribution as a change of pace to most other custom tracks. Also, if you have the time, I'd recommend watching the preview video by Wacker for this one as it includes custom character, item, and item box textures and it looks amazing. Great work Wacker and I'm looking forward to any other projects you have planned for in the future, even if it's the 18 other SNES tracks that you have to make for your distribution. Up next, we have Rainfall Ridge, created by the one and only ZPL and released on the 2nd of this month. ZPL needs no introduction at this point, I think everybody in the community can recognize his tracks and he's known for how quickly he can make a scarily consistent course. I have noticed that he's been focusing on making a lot of retro tracks recently, most likely to fill in slots for his retro rewind distribution, but this track in particular goes for a completely original design. I must say that it panned out since this has got to be one of my favorite ZPL tracks in general, which is a bold claim to make since there's a lot to choose from, but I really mean it. The track takes place in a grassy nature setting, only this time, it's raining. <gasps> no, but really, even if the theme is a little basic, I haven't seen many tracks that look quite like this one thematically, and this looks beautiful. The water, the garden, the boardwalks, and the caves all look stunning. But my favorite part of the track isn't the visuals, it's the design. My god, is this track fun to drive, and I mean in both the offline and online context. ZPL is no stranger to smooth layouts, but this track has a lot of intricacies that I did not notice on the first way through that I'm confident would make for super fun online races. The shroomless rail cut at the start that also acts as a shroom shortcut, the little found strats, the grass cut that's off the ramp that was hiding in plain sight the first time I tried the track out, and the boardwalk section as a whole. The potential for cool strats with the pass switches and everything is off the charts. While none of these strategies are difficult per se, it does resemble an easy to pick up and hard to master type track that I think is perfect for CTs, especially for a distribution like CTGP. As someone who is on the CTGP track council, which votes on what tracks get added to the pack and what doesn't, and as someone who plays competitive Mario Kart Wii and dabbles in competitive custom tracks from time to time, I think this would be a no-brainer for CTGP to add because of the meta surrounding the course. I think the pack lacks these simpler to drive courses that are shorter, and yet this track not only succeeds in doing that, but includes bits of tech to satisfy the competitive oriented players as well. I hope to see more original designs from CPL in the future, though something tells me I'm not going to have to wait that long before he makes another distribution worth of tracks. The next track we have comes from the 35th custom track jam that premiered on the 7th of this month. 
The theme of the jam was candy, and while the track I chose to highlight did not win the competition, I still think it's a very solid course without question. The track is Candy Corp Canyon created by David Slane and Shorky. There were definitely many other tracks from the jam I could have chose to talk about here since it was a very solid set of courses overall, but I must say that this one is my favorite design wise and it was made by creators I haven't talked about before on the channel. I was familiar with both of these guys through other jam competitions in the CT Jam Discord as well. It was Shorky specifically who I started following more closely since I was a fan of his style of tracks. And according to David Slane, this was 99% of his modeling. And yeah, this track is great. I've noticed Shorky is very design oriented when it comes to making tracks, which happens to display itself for this track as well. The factory section in the beginning has all these cool pathways and trickable platforms and cuts that really encourage people to explore everything there is to offer. The rest of the track is much more simplistic, but I do think it balances really well with the factory section and is still smooth to drive with a couple of strats to consider in races. The focus on design does not hinder the visuals, in fact I also like how this looks quite a bit. I like how the candy theme is incorporated in the factory context and I like some of the unique visual elements this track includes. It definitely doesn't skip out on having a great presentation. The track's currently in a beta version and you might have noticed it's lagged a little bit. The track is a little unfinished, but that does not stop me from seeing the heaps of potential this design has, which has basically been fully realized at this point other than some bug fixes and polish. I hate to say it again, but this track would be great in CTGP. This is a really solid course and I'm looking forward to any new tracks that David Slane and Shorky make. Awesome job guys. Up next, we have a port of Crash Cove from Crash Team Racing, which was made by Tasris and released on the 9th of January. This is one I don't have much to say on. I'm someone who has not played Crash Team Racing, so I can't say for sure whether this is a suitable enough rendition of the track stylistically. What I can say is that this has good visuals and a good design for Mario Kart Wii Racing. I do happen to like quite a few ports and remakes of Crash Team Racing tracks, and this is no exception. This is the first track in CTR apparently, but I think it works great as a simpler introductory course that would have its uses and distributions. I like the unique visuals. and comparison to the most other CTs, and I like the custom background objects as well. You can ride on the ships for crying out loud! I'm sorry, I don't know why I thought that was a good idea. You can actually do this shortcut that involves a BC3-like ramp in the lake onto a platform that I discovered accidentally. Pretty neat. Good work, Tass Reese. I know you make like one track a year, but I do look forward to them whenever they pop up on the wiki, and I'm excited to see what your next track will be in 2023. When I began writing this episode, I wanted it to be a fair and equal showcase of all the tracks I chose to cover in order to give every creator an equal opportunity, but I do recognize that this one is the real star of the show. This is FGKR Downhill River created by Mano Wee and uploaded on the 10th of January. FGKR of course stands for Family Go-Kart Racing and it's one of the most influential racing games of our generation coming from the WiiWare line of applications featuring the lovable characters Billy, Daddy, and Mommy. As you can imagine, this game is rather obscure, but I'm sure most of you guys watched Scott the Waz, so like me, you were already familiar with the game. For whatever reason though, Manoe decided to make his port of the track from Family Go-Kart Racing good. <laughs> I do genuinely find this fun to drive, and it looks great too in all honesty. A very unique visual style without a doubt. This is a simple mountain themed track, sure, but I personally don't mind it being a little more basic. I haven't played the original game, I know, I just lost all my credibility, but it does look identical to the source material, in fact it looks much cleaner now that it's ported, but yeah, really solid course for Mana Wii even despite the let's say circumstances. I have kept up with Mana Wii for a while and some of his recent output has been very impressive for sure. It just so happens that this was the only track he released this month, so this is all I have of his to talk about. I don't think this is representative of what's to come from him in the future, but if he resorts to porting every track from Family Go-Kart Racing into Mario Kart Wii, I'm not complaining. <laughs> well done Mana Wii, well done. It's unfortunate that no track could live up to the standard set by Mana Wii and is one of a kind experience, but our next track should not be overlooked, especially considering how good it is. This is Deciduous Grounds by Antares, which was uploaded on the 14th of the month. This was originally a part of the 16th custom track jam back in late 2020. If you remember, the theme for that one was Holiday and Leaf, in which I uploaded a bounce track and to this day I have no regrets. <laughs> I remember the submission though because it looked like a pretty good track, but it was unplayable because of an infinite respawn loop. But say goodbye to that infinite loop because now we're driving on the road. And the track is actually really good now that you can drive on it. The outdoor autumn theme is cozy and nice with the orange tinge to the natural scenery and the homes around the course. Uh, the visuals are solid and the design is simple yet effective. I know I've described basically every design so far as simple, but this is more proof that simple isn't a bad thing at all. This is super smooth to drive and the design has a seemingly good amount of off-road for potential online play. I haven't tested any of these online myself, but I do think that this could make for fun races in something like CTGP. The strat with Boardwalk is pretty neat as well, especially the Shrimless variant that I didn't spend enough time learning for the preview video, I'm sorry for that. Uh, overall, a very solid package and I'm glad Antares finally found the motivation to 
finish the track after all these months. Also, I didn't mention this before, but this is his first custom track uploaded to the wiki, and I've gotta say it's one hell of a track to start a CT career with. I hope we can see more tracks from you in the future, Antares, because this is great stuff. Up next, we have N64 Yoshi Valley by ZPL, originally uploaded in December of 2021 but was updated to version 1.1 on the 15th of January. With this series, I don't plan on discussing tracks with small updates if most of the work was done prior to the month I'm focusing on. However, this 1.1 update that ZPL did felt like a massive overhaul to the original 1.0 version he released earlier, and I found myself loving the changes a lot. The design takes after the Mario Kart 8 version of Yoshi Valley, which I've always wanted to see in Mario Kart Wii. The track is almost perfectly proportioned for this to be more compact than the original N64 version, yet still very fun to play. The visuals are vibrant, the textures are great, the Yoshi egg and the other Yoshi objects are awesome, and the whole atmosphere of the track is really nice. This might be a more subjective thing for me personally, but I also like the decision to make the fastest route with the bridge have off-road on it. I've always wanted a Mario Kart 8 styled remake of Yoshi Valley, and this was exactly what I was envisioning. This is the perfect track to satisfy everyone who's missed Yoshi Valley since Zilli's version was removed from CTGP. I can truly admire ZPL's determination to make his tracks the best that they can be with consistent updates. Incredible work as always. I said earlier in the video that I love out of the box thinking when it comes to making any part of a custom track. That also extends to entire custom courses that shatter the boundaries of what makes a track a track. I hope that pompous description could help justify why I wanted to showcase this. This is Donkey Kong Jump Conquest by Love Life and T-Post 024 or E-Man Rezu which is what I'll be calling him for this segment, and this track was uploaded January 16th as a part of the 20th Turbo Jam that had the theme of percussion and the requirement of including a jump pad. In case you don't know what a Turbo Jam is, it's basically a custom track jam, but instead of getting 4 days to make a track, you get 3 hours. So this track is... Well, it's not a track. I consider it more of a challenge, really. A competition to see who can complete the course the fastest with a distinct focus on survival. And this track is frustrating, but in all the right ways. To introduce the track, I will read a short quote from Eman Rezu's preview video description. Have you ever wanted to play the original Donkey Kong game in Mario Kart Wii? I know you haven't. You basically use the jump pads to hop over the barrels, which are retextured Moonview Highway cars, so if you hit them you get squished or you get sent flying, and usually you get comboed multiple times by many barrels when you get hit. Now there are invisible walls on either side of the track to make this easier, but that doesn't mean you can't fall off. In fact, it is very common to fall off during the transitions to the higher levels. This track is torture, and yet it's hard to stop playing. It's a super fun way to challenge yourself to try and hit as few barrels as you can, even if it's impossible sometimes. I know no one would believe me if I said this, but I do find value in tracks like these that change how the racers play to such a high degree. I already mentioned my bounce track from earlier, where if you fall off the mushrooms, you have to travel the rest of the race in heavy off-road. I did make that track as a genuine attempt to create a fun and unique experience in the game, and I know E-Man Rezu likes to do the same thing with some of his tracks. Don't try and tell me this track would not be super fun online against other people. I don't want to hear it. Time trialing this track was addictive, I really wanted to set a good time more so than any regular track I've played. I'm not a time trialer, but regardless, this track is just fun. If you don't see the hype simply from the video on your screen, I encourage you to give the track a try yourself. Once you set a time, it's going to be hard to put down that controller. Thank you Eamon Rezu for another track that is super fun to play for all the wrong reasons. I can always count on you. The next track we have comes from the second edition of David Slane's First Come First Serve Challenge, which premiered on the 17th of January. The track I chose to cover was Pandora Palace, which was also created by Shorky. Before writing this video, I wasn't familiar with the First Come First Serve Challenge, but the whole premise is that there's a bank of 25 themes and the first person to claim a theme gets it. Each track, however, has its own requirement or limitation that the creator must follow to keep things interesting. The tracks that came out of this were all around pretty solid, and this one was my personal favorite. The track is based off Queen's Mansion from Deltarune, which is not a location or a game that I'm familiar with. I know it has something to do with Undertale, but the disconnect between me and the inspiration behind the course does not stop me from really enjoying it. The track has a very grand and blocky design that I think works quite well for the theme and gameplay. It reminds me of an old Undertale themed track I attempted to make in 2017, so I can definitely see the Toby Fox inspiration here. I like the completely different split paths at the start with different ideas, gameplay, and visuals. I really enjoy the skateboarding dogs that act as Moonview Highway cars afterwards, and how you can drive in the little sheltered areas for more protection and a boost panel. 
I think that's a very nice touch to improve the atmosphere of the course as well, making it feel like there can be more explored than meets the eye. The underground dungeon type section is sick and I love all the changes of pace that this track has, it never feels like it's lingering on a specific idea for too long, it really uses up the larger design well. I also like the boost panel section afterwards with the blocky trains that ride over the various boost panels. I'm sorry if these locations or objects have specific names attached to them, again I haven't played Deltarune so I wouldn't be able to understand any specific references. It still works as a Mario Kart track whether you're in the know or you're not though. My reasons for liking this track are very similar to the reasons I like Candy Corp Canyon, which if you forgot was also made by Shorky. He definitely has a distinct style when it comes to track creation and I love the designs that he comes up with. Great work as always, I'm looking forward to more of your upcoming tracks. Up next, we have a take of 3DS DK Jungle by CPL, which had a version dating back to early 2019, but this was completely remade on the 19th of this month. Again, we have another CPL track, another CPL retro, so I'm not going to dwell on the introduction too much. I'm not the biggest fan of 3DS tracks in general, but I do like seeing new takes of retros regardless of if I like the original tracks much, and this is a stunning version of DK Jungle. I'm going to avoid comparing this to the CTGP version, though I will say that I like this a lot more. The sunset theme works perfectly for the atmosphere, we can all see how beautiful this is. The design is great as this takes some inspirations from the Mario Kart 8 version instead of the 3DS like the triple jump before the temple and the ramp out of the temple. I also like the added shortcut in the forest area as well. The objects shouldn't go unnoticed either since CPL added whatever the bongo things are called, the spinning banana in the temple, and the screaming rock things at the end. Sorry, I have not read up on my DK jungle lore so I don't know what any of these objects are supposed to represent. Regardless, it all comes together to make one of the best takes of DK jungle I could have ever imagined in Mario Kart Wii. I really don't see the track improving much from here by CPL or any other creator, at least without too many creative liberties. Not to say that other people shouldn't try, I love seeing new versions and ideas of retros from people who want to introduce something new but I know for myself that this is basically exactly what I wanted to see in the track, so well done ZPO, to no one's surprise, you've done it again. Our next track is Wii U Electrodrome by Squire Turnbolt, which was uploaded on the 21st. If you're not familiar with Squire Turnbolt's name, you probably know him from Thump Bump Forest, which was a track added to CTGP recently that was made by him. He released his first track in mid-2021, and for lack of a better term, I think he's making moves in the CT space. I'm a fan of how he approaches tracks and designs, especially when it comes to modeling everything on his own, and when I saw that he created a version of Electrodrome from Mario Kart 8, I was excited to try it out. You might have noticed that not a lot of Wii U remakes get made for Mario Kart Wii, mostly due to how poorly anti-gravity can translate into the game, but another reason why I think they don't get made as often is because Mr. Bean doesn't allow any Mario Kart 8 or Mario Kart Tour tracks to be added to CTGP over fear of being copyrighted by Nintendo, so whenever someone makes a Mario Kart 8 or Mario Kart Tour track, they're doing it without the incentive of making it into CTGP, which I consider honorable for sure since I know this can be a deal breaker for some creators like myself. This version of Electrodrome by Squire is brilliant, and how it reflects the original track while seamlessly transitioning from a game with anti-gravity to a game without it. The visuals are great and resemble the Mario Kart 8 version wonderfully for starters. The design is also really nice. I think this track succeeds because it feels like it could have been designed for Mario Kart Wii, as opposed to some Mario Kart 8 remakes that feel forced in following the source material when the output isn't as pretty. The design flows great from section to section, the parts that were previously anti-gravity still drive well and resemble the original, and overall I think this track would work nicely in a distribution and in races against other players. Big shoutouts to any creator who's willing to take on the task of recreating Mario Kart 8 tracks on the Wii, I know it's not easy and it's always a pleasure to see how you guys decide to approach it. Awesome drop here Squire, I hope to see more tracks from you again soon because you've been on a roll for sure. Up next, we have an update to Gloomy Castle by Bree911, which was initially uploaded in early 2020, but was updated to version RC1 on the 29th. For anyone who is not a fan of the simpler designs I showed earlier in the video, here is a track for you. Before this update, I was well aware of Gloomy Castle and it was simply one of my favorite tracks ever. This update changes a lot and improves the course overall. I'm going to keep this section brief because I could easily ramble on about everything I love about the track, but yeah, Bree911 is one of my favorite creators, he's a flat out genius when it comes to making tracks. He has a tendency to use the KMP to his advantage to create lots of new ideas, but he's also really smart at designs and gameplay. There's a lot to do here, a lot to explore, and it is hard finding a design element that is unintentional. There were times I played this where I could swear I wouldn't get a lap count, but I did in the end. 
Basically, this is a massive castle track with tons of pathways, and as time progresses, some paths open and some close. Your lap 1 and your lap 2 will bear no resemblance to each other. There are some very creative shortcuts that can sometimes branch into entirely new pathways, and custom objects change up the gameplay nicely like the sliding tiles in the one room. The track is surprisingly intuitive for what it's going for, and I would love to play this online versus others. Go and play the damn track yourself, it's really something to experience and I could not recommend it more. Bree, you are an incredible creator and I will always look forward to any projects you have planned for in the future. It's incredible what you've done here. The last track we will be covering for this monthly showcase is Emerald Coast by Squadaloo, which was uploaded on the very last day of January. Squadaloo is another creator that I was pretty familiar with before making this video, and he's been releasing a lot of consistently good custom tracks recently. His first track, which was GBA Mario Circuit, dates back to 2010, and he came back in 2021 and has released some really cool stuff. This track is based on the Emerald Coast stage from Sonic Adventure, which is a game I've played, but it was a long time ago so I don't remember it that well. Regardless, this is a really great track overall. It handles the theme incredibly, it's easy to tell that this is Sonic inspired from the visuals, the design, and even the custom item boxes. I also really like the simple design and the changes of pace that have been throughout the track. The clean boardwalk section, the spiral, the halfpipe into the little split path, it all flows together really well. Not to mention that this track is a super good length overall. Not too long, but not too short. It hits that middle ground perfectly. I like the unique visuals and the sunny and warm atmosphere. I also really like the custom objects in the track, like the background orcas splashing around, and the really creative thwomp gates with the spikes. They're very smartly designed and look and function perfectly. Again, I hate to say this, but this would be great for CTGP, an easier track to pick up and play that's really fun to drive. Yeah, not much else to add. Great work Squadaloo, keep doing what you're doing because it's making for some great tracks. And that wraps up the first month of the 2022 Cousin Track Wiki Showcase. As always, the links for these tracks will be in the description if you'd like to check them out and try them yourselves. I'll also be linking to the YouTube channels of the creators showcased if you guys happen to be interested in following them more closely through their custom track content. I thought it would be a good way to pay homage to those who bless us with wonderful tracks on the wiki. I also thought it would be kind of fun to do a little award ceremony after each video for the fun of it. Again, I don't want to compare the tracks too much, but I do want to recognize what some of my favorite tracks that pop up throughout the year are, so let's get started. The award for the longest I've played a track from 2022 goes to Donkey Kong Drum Conquest by Love Life and T-Pose 024. I spent an embarrassing amount of time playing this and I will not disclose the number of hours. Moving onward, the award for the best CT debut of 2022, so far, goes to Antares with Deciduous Grounds. The track is incredible for a debut, but nobody else debuted on the wiki this month anyway, so <laughs> there's that. Next, the award for the best CT update of 2022, so far, goes to Gloomy Castle RC1 by Bree911. Definitely go try the track out if you haven't, it's a lot of fun and there's a hide and seek version if you're into that game mode as well. And finally, my pick for the best custom track of 2022 so far goes to Rainfall Ridge by ZPL. There were a Let's lot of great go. choices here, but I can't deny how much I love the design on this one. I hope you guys like the awards idea. I do want to keep track of some of my favorites each month and possibly do something at the end of the year with them, so let me know what you guys think. If you guys are interested in seeing more monthly showcases throughout the year, be sure to like the video and get in the comments, write what you think about it. Talk about the series, talk about the creators, talk about the tracks, talk about the awards, talk about months, talk about dogs, I don't know. Talk about anything you'd like, I'll read the comments. Since my last video, I'm in attending university, so my output definitely won't be as strong as maybe it once was, though it never really was that strong in the first place, but I do think these kinds of videos would be great to keep the channel going, so let me know what you guys think about them or what I could do to improve them in the future. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.